Hi guys, welcome back to Winsome Cottage Garden. My name is Hannah and I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. We are in our new house's garden. The last video we shared, you probably got a glimpse of this garden when we were healing in the dahlias that we dug up from the old house. And today I thought I would walk you around and show you what it looks like when I really haven't done all that much to this garden. Today I'm actually planning on planting the very first thing here. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I'm not sure when you're going to be seeing this. I am a bit behind in posting videos. This is being filmed on September 30th. Um, so where I am now is still West Michigan. I'm not really in a city anymore, so I don't think I could call this the city garden. I think it'll be more my home garden is probably how I will refer to it. And this lot is about two and a half times the size of my former place. Um, the previous owners had lived here for quite some time. I think they lived here since 1998. There's a lot of scope of opportunity to make this yard my own. So you'll see when we walk through, the only thing I've done thus far is actually has, I have a big holding area going, which is not even all my plants. I still have a ton of plants I need to bring down from the cottage garden, but I'm really excited about it. I've already got a lot of plans. And in an upcoming video, the, one of the first things that I will be doing this year is actually building a privacy fence uh, to help keep my dogs in. And that will help as kind of a background for the whole backyard. We are still in West Michigan. I am now technically a zone 6B and I am uh, about still an hour and a half south of my parents up at the cottage garden, but I too now am within three miles of Lake Michigan. I actually think that I'm a little further away from Lake Michigan than my parents are because they are, I've been said a couple miles, I think they're probably within one and I'm about three. Um, which means that I am going to get that tempering effect that they also get. And since I'm a little further south, that's why even though I'm in Michigan, which is quite cold, I'm a 6, 6B because it really helps keep the soil warm uh, and takes the edge off the cold of winter. Now, this winter is supposed to be very snowy. And now that I am this close, about three miles in is where the lake effect snow is the worst, three to five miles. So. I have that to look forward to, but I think it's going to be worth it with this yard. Uh, there are a lot of really nice mature trees, most of which are going to be staying. There are a couple that I think I am going to take out, which I'll kind of talk about when we get to those. Uh, but in general, I'm really excited with this blank canvas. So let's go take a look. Popping into the front yard, there is not a whole lot of stuff going on, though they do have some really pretty plants up near the house we'll take a closer look at. Though I do really want to quickly touch on this maple right here. I believe it is a Crimson King. And personally, I know a lot of people really like these, but I do not like Crimson King maples. This one, unfortunately, is quite mature. My guess is it was probably planted 10, maybe 15 years ago. I would not can take down trees just for the sake of taking down trees. But like I said, when I say I don't particularly care for them, I really, really don't like them. And I think what I want to do is add some spring flowering trees in this yard. There's not, from what I can tell, which obviously I need to live a spring season, a lot of spring interest in this yard. Uh, and flowering trees are one of my favorite parts of spring. So I think that's actually going to be a perfect spot for a crab apple. And I've also identified some areas that I want to add some dogwoods and some red buds as well to kind of help create a screen and a private feel in the front yard that you can still see the house still admire it but then helps screen it and create like a secret garden right in the front you'll note that there are a lot of really beautiful mature trees right here in the front that's actually my neighbor's yard because i have some white pines that are quite old and majestic as well as a couple oaks and i'm kind of at this point thinking that there will be some grass left here but i'll kind of bring this whole thing in at some point to a shade garden. I'd want to do it over time and take some of this myrtle and transfer it over so it's not just all mulch and fill it with hostas and like bishop's seal and lots of beautiful shade things. Cause right now it's got a lot of sun. We're about mid morning. And I think this and an evening shadow sun is all that this really will get. But if we come closer, you may recognize some things that have been neglected. Um, this front bed has a ton of beautiful myrtle in it, as well as what I think are some daylilies, boxwood, and a couple different varieties of hydrangea. 
and either azaleas or rhododendron. I'm thinking they're probably azaleas given their smaller leaf, uh, but we'll have to wait until the spring to see. They also have a ton of this, which I believe is a hookerella, maybe a tiarella. I don't think it's a hookera, but I'm, I honestly don't really know what it is. And uh, a couple of really pretty hostas. Now I do like this hookerella. There's just quite a lot of it throughout the yard and I like a little bit more variety. So I'll probably be digging that up and seeing who wants some. We have this really pretty hydrangea, which I'm not exactly sure what kind it is, but I love this. I like this color. I suspect that is right before this. Or maybe it'll go into that, but either way, it's very pretty. And you guys, I'm really excited about this. There are a ton of Hakuana Kloa. I think this is probably a golden one with a really pretty variegation that I think I'm going to divide and help spread out because I, I really like this texture and I think adding a little bit there to break up the myrtle would be pretty as well. I skipped over this, but I'm pretty sure this is a Durfella, like a Kodiak one of some sort looking at the leaves. I do know they left me a drawing and I, I found this on there and I wasn't sure if it was correct. Uh, so I'm going to have to refine the drawing and remind myself what it said. But going over here, there's a small bed with a really pretty Japanese maple that I suspect is a blood good that's not getting a ton of sun. So it's got um, more... And the light is kind of hard to see this, but it's got more greenish toned leaves. We've got more myrtle, a variegated wygelia, and some more daylilies, as well as another that I think is a rhododendron versus an azalea and some sedum that really aren't getting enough sun. And a couple of hookerellas that are looking a little sad that all need to be popped out and shifted elsewhere. Uh, as we make our way around the back, you'll see another rhododendron, I think. And let's actually, I'm going to pause and hop to the other side of the backyard. I'm now on the other side of the front yard, and you can see all the materials for the fence are here. Um, and actually, the fence will eventually come to the property line up here, but it won't have a cross section until right here which I'm really excited about this. It's like kind of random, but there's a big garage door here, which even though the fence will be divided here, I'll still have really good access to the backyard with this. And uh, what I'm planning, this is all fairly shaded. Got a nice big deck. You can see it a little bit better this way. Um, there'll be like a seated area and a dinner area. There are these arbivitae that are really tall, really tall. Um, but they block uh, this window quite a lot and the view of the yard and they're not really giving any extra privacy because they have this big beautiful blue spruce here that kind of blocks the neighbor on that side. So I think these might end up coming down. Eventually I also need to continue the rail uh, and then this U will come out. I do not like U so it's definitely coming out and then these Arbivitae may also come out. I might see if I can transplant them, though they are quite large. But I do obviously need a rail before I take these things out, because that is not safe. So we continue around, you can actually kind of see a vague string. Well, I have that out because I'm going to be planting some things today. That'll help define where they go. But we've got these beautiful hemlock trees that are quite that provide a screen like and a green wall at the back of the yard and you there's not a lot back here there's some myrtle there's a big beautiful holly bush and you can see the beginnings of my plant hoard started all my dahlias you probably saw and if not I'll link the video here uh, they're doing well they were looking a little sad uh, and they have lost some leaves but in general I think they picked up which was kind of the goal. I just healed them into the ground here, created a couple small rows, and then we're gonna let them naturally go into dormancy, at which point we will dig and store the tubers for next year. I actually am not even really sure where my dahlia patch is gonna go. It might end up being in the front yard, 
we'll have to kind of wait and see. It's a little hard to gauge sunlight because I got possession of this house mid to end of September. Uh, and the sun is already kind of sinking in the sky. So I'm not sure if it's showing a true amount of light or in the summer when the sun is a lot higher, I'll have a tiny bit more. I'm also thinking next year, what I'll probably do is purchase like one of those meters that you can get that'll tell you full sun or part sun. I think in this backyard, I've got a really good, nice thick spot of full sun and then mostly shade. And I think the sun, the front is mostly shade as well shade to part sun. So I'll be playing with sunlight a little because I love a lot of full sun plants. They just might not perform as well here as they did in my old garden. Uh, and I am also digging, dealing with a septic field in the backyard, which will limit how I can use the space. Uh, though, as I've liked to joke in my older videos, you guys know I really hate cutting the grass. And you may have noticed that there's quite a lot of grass here. So we'll have to shrink that over time. Not all at once, but um, I've got enough plants to get a garden started. Unfortunately, what I really don't have are the things that should go in first. In my old garden, I did have to leave, which is right, a lot of the larger shrubs and trees. So that is going to be one of the first things I spend time and money on, getting those in and getting those established so they can start growing. In fact, I already purchased a couple larger hydrangeas, which is what we're going to plant at the end of this video. Here is the plant hoard. I actually need to go through it and grab some things that are going to the cottage. But these are some that I purchased. These are quick fab fires. Uh, they get five to six feet wide and six to eight feet tall. So they're going to go in the front to help create a hedge. And then you might notice I have some oak leaf hydrangeas that are going to go along this back corner to help soften the fence line. Looking back in the yard, you'll see there are again some more daylilies, some iris, and I think that's a weed, but I'm not entirely sure. And there was obviously at one point another hemlock here that has died and left kind of a hole that I'm trying to decide if I want to fill or leave for a little extra sunlight. Um, this is pretty deep shade. So I'm not sure what kind of ground cover will grow, but I'm going to try to get some ground cover going because I do prefer ground cover over mulch. And then I have a really cute shed and this, which this is, I think, going to be the prime full sun spot in this backyard. So east is that way, west, and that is north. So it's southern facing and I have about 10 feet, 10 to 15 feet before the septic field starts. Um, so I think that's a nice thick border that we can get some layers in, but I do have to be conscious of the windows because I do love natural light and I want to make sure I'm maintaining that as well. And that's a chimney exhaust, so I'm not sure what that means for plants. I'm going to have to look into that, but let's go look and see what's there a little closer. We have a sand cherry, I believe. It's hard to tell. It's a little greener than I would have expected, which means it's probably getting more sun. I'm not sure. Boxwood daylilies, another dervilla, and another really pretty looking azalea or rhododendron. Again, I'm leaning towards azalea. These are quite small. That brings us around to where we were earlier. It kind of completes the swath of the yard. This isn't really exactly a tour because there's actually not a lot to show you. You can see it's kind of a blank canvas, so they do have some larger mature specimens. And today, what I would like to do now is actually get those hydrangeas I just showed you planted. I'm going to go get my tripod and set them up. There's some I might not plant because I'm not entirely sure where the uh, utilities are in that area and I have called Miss Dig which you want to do but they're not here yet so what I might do is very carefully dig one by hand slowly and see if I run into anything um, and then decide if I want to continue or just wait the problem is Miss Dig probably aren't going to come out until we are going to put up the fence which is probably going to be like a month month and a bit which puts us at a time that's a little late for planting especially in my area but I'm going to play it by ear. We're going to see how it goes. I know I'll be able to plant my oak leaf hydrangeas 
So I'll get them placed, see what we get planted, and then I'll come back and give you a little bit more information on the varieties we're planting today. another type of hydrangea today but I think this is gonna have to do it because it took a lot longer than I had thought I wish I had my auger here uh, it's still at the cottage um, but that would have made this very easy though I wouldn't have been able to use it to plant the next one but I didn't so I had to dig these all by hand and it proved a little difficult because predictably there were some roots in there not a lot I only had to really move one because of a root situation and I probably could have powered through. I just decided not to. Let's go take a little bit closer look at this. These are ice crystal oak leaf hydrangeas and I'm really excited to get this like hedge started. There are five of these here and their growing habits a little odd so it's a little difficult to see the spacing but I spaced them out. These get, I've seen varying degrees of what they said. The place I bought it from said that they get five to six feet uh, wide and three to six feet tall. And I think you can kind of see from their growing habit that they clearly like sprawl out a little bit. I am hoping they get that five or six feet tall because I'd love for them to be this like backstory plant picking up where these hemlocks end off. Oak leaf hydrangeas are really interesting. As you might predict from the name, they have unique leaves. They are shaped like oak leaves. Uh, and I don't think this is an accurate color uh, representation of their fall color, but they usually turn like a burgundy to bright red in the fall. So I think that will provide a really bright pop here. They're really great in shade-like places, which is why I picked them for this spot, because even though this one will probably get a tiny bit more, these two actually, will get a little bit more sun than the rest. These are basically a full shade situation, and I was really looking for that step-down type of plant. Hydrangeas are a good one, and oak leaf is a favorite. Now, I decided to get these kind of late in the season, um, and nobody had them. I think I called probably like seven or eight different places and stopped by others because I really wanted oak leaf. I wasn't super picky about which variety and I struck out, I struck out, I struck out. And actually the day I got possession of this house, I was driving from my work to here and I actually pass like three or four different nurseries in that route. 
which is dangerous. Uh, and I also go through quite a lot of growing fields. Uh, it's like a really, I must be a, a big area for growers, which I knew, but it's actually a really awesome drive to work to see like the test fields and things like that. Long story short, I was driving, I struck out the last place I went, I was heading here and there was a sign for a place that I was pretty sure was a grower saying that they were having a sale. So I pulled in and they were a grower and they only do a, they're wholesaler. They only do a sale to the general public nine days a year. I happened to be there on the last day and they had oak leaf hydrangeas. So I picked up five of them and they were a really great price. I think what I'll probably do is keep an eye out in the spring for some other varieties of oak leaf. I really like ones that are more puffy. These have almost a mop head appearance, but I was so excited to find some and I think they'll fill this space well that I'll be able to add additional varieties, probably not to this hedge, but in other areas of the garden that have that different bloom type. So there's a variety to enjoy. I mentioned they get three to six tall and five to six wide. They also are zone five, six, and seven. So actually kind of a narrow growing zone, but I'm thrilled I fit right smack dab in the middle of that range. As I mentioned, I think that's gonna do it for this video and I really appreciate you joining me today and checking out our new home garden. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button so you can follow along on this garden's journey as well as the cottage garden. There won't be a ton of great strides made in this garden this year, except the fence will be a pretty big thing. But come the spring, we're just gonna go crazy. So you won't wanna miss that. Thanks again for joining me, I really appreciate it and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.